Bill Maher. Bill Maher says that Barbie was terrible. He said, okay, Barbie, I was hoping it wouldn't be preachy, man-hating, and a zombie lie. Alas, it was all three. What's a zombie lie? Something that never was true, but certain people refused to stop saying it. Uh, tax cuts for the rich increase revenues, for example, or something that used to be true but no longer is, but certain people pretend it's still true. Barbie is kind of a zombie lie. He goes on this whole long essay. He hated Barbie. I rest my case. You know, I had a little bit of a debate with our pal, Ben Shapiro, and some other conservatives. This real, Barbie really split the conservative movement. And now that Bill Maher says that Barbie was terrible, I rest my case that it was terrific. There were some people pointing to Bill Maher's commentary and saying, see, this, this proves that Barbie was bad. Bill Maher is wrong about pretty much everything. But I, thank you. I'm so glad Bill Maher disagrees with me. That's how I know I'm right. And, and this ties into something we were talking about a little bit earlier, which is a deeper issue here. And that is Bill Maher is a liberal. He's a, he's a progressive liberal, but he's styled himself in recent years as slightly more classical liberal. I don't know. Classical meaning he's a liberal from the 90s. And some conservatives, some people on the right, have really gone along with this. Some of the squishier people on the right they say, oh, I agree with Bill Maher on all sorts of things. That's a problem. Bill Maher is an atheist libertine who maybe will say wokeness has gone too far or something. If that's the best conservatives can do, if the best conservatives can do is, is conserve 90s liberalism, then let's just hang it up, folks. If we cannot offer an alternative political vision, if, we're, if, if the moment that someone does offer an alternative political vision, we just cut and run and go whine on MSNBC and CNN, then just hang it up. Then there are no conservatives in America. If you can't recognize that Bill Maher is wrong about the most important things, He's funny. I like, I like Bill Maher. He invited me on his show one time. I, I didn't make it. Uh, maybe I'll, I'd be happy to go on again. I, I like him in some ways. He's kind of funny, but he's wrong about everything. And if a conservative can't acknowledge that, you know, come on, then you probably don't even realize that Barbie's a good movie. Right now, go to genucell.com slash KnowlesYT. Our friends over at Genucell sold out of their dark spot corrector, and our listeners have been begging, begging like dogs for a restock. Well, I've got great news. Just in time for the summer, it's back in stock. Genucell's famous dark spot corrector has not one, but three cutting edge ingredients and goes to work fast to target sunspots, dark spots, liver spots, even old discoloration, both on your face and hands. You can now enjoy your summer sun, beach, and barbecues without embarrassing spots. Genucell's most popular package also features their summer essentials, such as the best-selling ultra retinol moisturizer with a powerful retinol alternative for safe use in the sun. See results very quickly or 100% of your money back guaranteed. Go to genucell.com slash Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S-Y-T right now to get your dark spot corrector in the Genucell most popular package. That is genucell.com slash Knowles, Y-T right now. Save over 70, 70% off Genucell's most popular package. All orders include a mystery luxury gift while supplies last. Genucell.com slash Knowles, Y-T. Jonah Goldberg is typifying this. Uh, he's furious that that people aren't just going along with the program. Jonah came out with a book after he had his his big split with the GOP and the conservatives over Trump. He was one of the true inveterate never Trumpers. He, like a lot of the self-styled classical liberals, wrote one of these books about how everything today is really great and all those dumb, stupid people in the middle of the country need to shut up and stop complaining because, uh, you know, the, the enlightenment and classical liberalism is just so wonderful and we just, uh, we, we don't appreciate it enough. And so Jonah Goldberg is following this idea now to its logical conclusion by complaining about the uh, fact that people, ordinary people, have a say in the nominating contests for the GOP. He's complaining that candidates are paying attention, not just to the big mega donors on Wall Street, but to the small dollar ordinary donors in, on Main Street. I just also think that we are dealing with a time where there were a lot of people, there was a, there was a lot of cheering and, and self-congratulation about the rise of small donors a decade ago. And now small donors are actually one of the biggest problems for democracy, for the GOP, because um, small donor, large donors actually have a strategic view about moderation, who can win, who can't. Small donors really are just venting their spleen with yep. their credit card 
and um, and they lock candidates into positions that can hurt them in the general election. Venting their spleen, the contempt just dri- dripping from his voice. They're just these small, these small dollar donors, which is to say, ordinary people. These ordinary people, they're a real threat to democracy. This is the exact same thing Hillary Clinton said. These deplorable, irredeemable, ordinary people, they're a threat to our democracy because sometimes they want something that I, an elite liberal, do not want. And that's a big threat. Jonah's actually taking the argument even further. You got to give him points for at least being honest about his views here, where he's saying, you know, if these campaigns were just decided by a handful of billionaires on Wall Street, we'd be so much better off. Our democracy would be so much healthier. Of course, that's an incoherent statement. Democracy is government of, of the people, by the people, for the people. But he's showing you that when liberals on the left and on the right, when they use that term democracy, when they complain because the, the Hungarian people elected Viktor Orban, oh no, this is a threat to democracy. You say, how could the people voting for someone be a threat to democracy? What they mean by democracy is liberalism of a very elite, theoretical, ideology that is have is having all sorts of problems in practice but to which these people cling with the zeal of the most ardent converts and proselytizers of course of course but it's not convincing people and so when that argument doesn't convince people then the liberals on the left and the right turn against the people explicitly. Asa Hutchinson's doing exactly the same thing. Asa Hutchinson, who I theoretically is running for president, he's the former governor of Arkansas, who, who became best known for insisting as a quote unquote Republican governor, insisting that we in Arkansas. Asa Hutchinson made the same point. The fact is I'm not a self-funded candidate. Uh, and and the RNC rules is burdensome on the candidates to, instead of focusing on other ways of raising money and focusing on uh, other styles of campaigning, I've got to spend all of my time at the Iowa State Fair trying to get on the debate stage with $1 contributions. And so uh, that's not helpful and it's not good for our democratic process. It's not helpful to me that I can't just call a few billionaires and then become the president. I have to go, I have to talk to those disgusting, filthy people in, in Iowa. I got to go to the state fair and eat a corn dog like a, like a plebeian. Can you imagine like a roughneck, disgusting peasant? And that's a big threat to, I got to talk to people. It's a big threat to our democracy if I've got to talk to people to become their president. Notice where Asa Hutchinson made this comment. Did he say it on The Daily Wire? Did he say, did he say it on Tucker Carlson's show? No. Did he say it on The Blaze? Did he say it on? No. He didn't even say it on Fox News. He said it on MSNBC. Where did Jonah make his comments? I believe it was CNN. These, these guys were Republicans. Even it pains me to see what's happened to Jonah Goldberg because I used to enjoy reading him sometimes. But the moment that Donald Trump came in and injected a little bit of nationalism, a little bit of populism into the national conservative conversation, all those guys split. Said, nope, no thanks. I was willing to play around with the Republicans for a little bit when I thought that I could steer the party in a liberal direction. But now that I can't, okay, I'm, a, I'm effectively a Democrat. I, I know Jonas, I think, still says he's a Republican. Asa Hutchinson's running as a Republican for president, doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell. But in their practical lives, where do they write? Who funds them? What TV channels do they go on? It's all for the left. The liber- Russell Kirk made this warning. In the early days of the post-war conservative movement, when there was the prospect of a fusion between the conservatives and the libertarians, Russell Kirk, the great conservative political philosopher, warned, he said, this is not going to work out very well because a lot of those libertarians ultimately are going to going to move to the left. What a great clip. Now, now, bop, bop, bop. You got to ring that bell. Subscribe to the Michael Knowles channel. We'll see you next time.